We are often asked how fast are you with your new algorithms and with the additional sources. So we try to analyze the speed, let's say, within um, by means of this AHEC outbreak last year in May 2011 in Germany. What you can see here is now the amount of tweets that contain, can contain the term Durchfall, which means diarrhea. And well, the fact is that on 21st of May, the Robert Koch Institute officially um, made the public aware of that outbreak. So you can see that after that date, the amount of tweets increased that contain the term diarrhea. But we were now interested in the days before the 21st of May to see whether people are re twittering or tweeting about symptoms even before the official announcement. And we could see that there was an increase of Twitter messages, of text messages that contain this term diarrhea the days before the official notification. And here you can only uh, you can see only the tweets that contain the term diarrhea. So there are other systems that might be of relevance for this kind of anal analysis as well within the EHA case. But this made us confident that it is possible to detect to use social media or it's relevant to use social media data for analyzing for, for, for finding information about public health sets earlier. We also try to analyze whether our algorithms we developed within the project um, are working within, in, yeah, let's say, an artificial experiment. So here we used um, people working at the Robert Koch Institute and other persons, so we had around 15 persons. And we ask them to write Twitter tweets, Twitter messages for three scenarios. So you can see the scenarios here. They had to consider a measles outbreak. So they were supposed to write Twitter messages, saying that people stayed at home on suspicion of measles. So they could say, I am a pupil. So they write from the perspective of the pupil, of the parents, or of the teachers. So there were different choices possible. Um, then another outbreak was related to salmonellosis, which we wanted to have these test users um, that, uh, think that they are fans of the European uh, viewing some um, European Championship game and reporting about symptoms. And the last scenario was related to hepatitis A. So here we ask people to write Twitter messages and we feed our system with those messages and we want to see where the signals are generated. Because the problem is we don't have, of course there are disease outbreaks everywhere in the world every day, but we want to have a controlled, controlled environment where we want to test our algorithms and that's why we decided to use people to write this kind of tweets about C uh, three diseases we have control about. So the post condition was that we have around 200 tweets generated by these per persons. And well, this is some additional information about the tweet. And the result was actually that there were three signals generated. So these 200 tweets were aggregated to three signals. And these three signals were related to measles, fever, and diarrhea, which is actually quite nice because they explicitly refer to our three disease outbreaks. Now, an additional key finding is a, I want to mention is the integration, which is also relevant for adoption I will introduce later on. 
As I mentioned, there is a medical information system Medisys and it is a media monitoring system and here we integrated some of our web services and we can now, with the users all over the world that are using Medisys, can now see MECO generated signals through the Medisys user interface. Okay, now I'm almost at the end of my presentation and I would like to say a few words about the future. So as I mentioned, we are almost done with this project, but we have already some ideas on how to go beyond, so what to, uh, what to do with the methods. And there are other scenarios for decision support where the methods can be used. In particular, I want to introduce um, one scenario I was told about. So in El Salvador, there are many people that are suffering from renal failure. And in this context, it is important to identify the risk factors, dangerous areas and other things that are related to this disease, to this renal failure. It is also crucial to monitor the health status of the people that are suffering from this disease. So in this situation, MECO systems, MECO algorithm can, MECO algorithms can help probably. So the precondition is here, or the, the assumption would be in the scenario that agricultural workers, so for example, people that are suffering from renal failure, are reporting about the symptoms or observations they made on Twitter or Facebook. Now the assumption could be that not the agricultural workers, also people that are suffering from the disease, but the public health workers for, from Ladies Love Foundation are providing information about local situations through Twitter and Facebook. And this kind of observations, reports that are yeah, sent through the social media channels could be analyzed by the MECO algorithms and they could be analyzed, processed in order to identify trends whether yeah, more agricultural workers became become sick or are reporting about more serious symptoms, whether there are other dangerous areas detected or whether there's some additional risk now coming up, whatever. As I showed it earlier, we are also mapping the signal signals to geographical maps. So the methods could also be used to generate GIS risk maps using the collected spatial information. So in these tweets, we have, for example, user profiles where the user um, says where he is located, where he or she is located, or sometimes also in the Twitter messages itself, they are reporting locations. So this kind of information is processed by the MECO tools and they can be analyzed and mapped to geographical maps. As I mentioned, as I presented it also, we have other kinds of visualizations such as tech clouds that can provide hints to risk factors of this disease. So all in all, the methods we are providing by the MECO project could help for, diseases, uh, for decision support in this kind of scenarios. And that's also my conclusion. So we are providing as a result of our project, methods for monitoring social media data. In particular, we are providing new methods for dealing with the peculiarities of multimedia transcripts. The algorithms we are providing are open to other scenarios. I presented one possible idea of such a scenario, and it allows spatial decision support for public health problems. Some additional further, re for some further readings if you are interested in the technical details of the project, of the algorithms, and yeah, 
Now I'm at the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention and your interest. If you have any questions, you can contact me by email.